periodic law states that physical and chemical properties of the elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. So basically, when arranged in order of increasing atomic number, elements with similar properties appear at regular intervals, which are the periods. To put it in another way, periodic law is basically a bunch of patterns that can be found within the periodic table. There are 18 groups and 7 periods on the periodic tables. The main grouping of the elements are alkali metals, alkaline, earth metals, translation metals, post-translation metals, metalloids, halogens, and noble gases. There are also four blocks of the periodic table based upon their electron energy levels. They are the S, P, F, and D blocks. Now back to the groups. Alkali metals on the very far left are highly reactive and easily lose their electrons to foreign cations, which are the positive ions. Alkaline earth metals from group 2 are also really reactive and are ready to lose their electrons, like the alkali metals just not as much. Now translation metals are basically referred to by scientists as the metals in the D block. Halogens are often affiliated with trends in electron affinity and electronegativity. Now the noble gases group is the least reactive. Before we get into the periodic law itself, here's a little history about it. Mendeleev is a scientist given credit for discovering periodic law. He placed the elements in order of increasing atomic mass and also grouped them by similar properties. Mosley discovered a new pattern. He found that atoms fit patterns better when arranged in order of increasing nuclear charge, which is the number of protons in a nucleus. Alright, so now to actually get into the trends described by periodic law. So one property of atoms is electron affinity. This is basically what you call the electron when a neutral atom acquires electrons. Halogens are really reactive relating to this property, so they gain electrons most readily. In each block, electron affinity increases along the period until the last period of the block, which becomes zero. Group 14 to group 15 is the exception to this. In general, electrons add with greater difficulty going down the group because there is a slight increase in effective nuclear charge down the group which increase electron affinities. Increasing atomic radius down the group also causes electron affinity to decrease. Another of the big trends is atomic radii, which is half the distance between a nucleus of two atoms chemically bond bonded together. Along periods, there are smaller atoms because of the increasing positive charge of the nucleus. This means the positive charge of the nucleus pulls the electrons closer. The atomic radii of the main group elements increase down a group. Relating to the atomic radii, there is ionic radii which you can probably guess from the name is the radius of an ion. The metals on the left hand side of the periodic table tend to form positive ions more easily because it's easier for atoms with only one or two valence electrons to become positive ions. The non-metals at the upper right tend to form negative ions because it is easier to have a full outer shell by gaining electron. Positive ion radii decrease across a period because the electron cloud shrinks due to the increasing charge of the nucleus. Lastly, just like how the radii of atoms increase going down, the radii of ions increase going down due to electron shells being filled in. Ionization energy is another one of the big trends found in the periodic table. This is pretty much the energy needed to remove an electron from an atom. For the most part, looking at only the main group's elements, ionization energy increases along the periods. The elements in the first group have very low ionization energies because they only have one electron in their outer shell. Noble gases have extremely high ionization energies because of their electron shells are already completely filled. This now brings us to an important concept that is most likely reviewed, balanced electrons. They are the electrons in the highest energy level and are responsible for chemical reactions with other atoms. And now for our last topic, electronegativity. This is the measure of atoms' electrons' attraction. Electron negativities tend to increase going across each period, with exceptions of course. The two groups at the very far left are at least electronegative elements. Nitrogen, oxygen, and halogens are the most electronegative elements. Electronegativities tend to decrease down a group or remain about the same. To really sum it all up, periodic law is a bunch of trends that scientists have found to be in the periodic table.